This is the resume that got me 15 software engineering job offers. It has all the components you need to create the perfect resume, the right structure, the right contents, and the right presentation. And today, I'm gonna teach you how to do it too, how to create that resume that will get you the dream offer. If you like the way my resume looks, I put a link to the template in the description below, so feel free to download it and follow along. Though in this video, I'll be walking you through my software engineering resume, there was a time in my life when I was applying to more traditional business roles, so I've also included a link to my business resume. All the points I'm gonna cover are the same, so feel free to follow along in whichever resume fits your current role better. And a thank you to our friends at Squarespace for making this video possible. 15 software engineering offers, six internship, nine full-time, one optimal resume. Let's get into it. Preface, the perfect resume is one page, no more, no less. One page filled with all the most important information about you. It looks beautiful. There's just enough white space and it tells a story. It's filled with action and impact and personality. It's uniquely you. And never lie on your resume, but it's okay to embellish the truth. Sometimes there are multiple ways of saying the same thing. Some ways just sound better. I'll show you. Analysis. Let's start from the very top. Front and center should be your name, your full name. It should by far be the biggest text on the entire page. Right below should be one line with two or three pieces of information. I'd recommend your email address, hyperlinked so it's clickable, your phone number, and your location. Now that everything is remote, location matters way less, but if you do choose to include it, just put the city and state or country. A full address is not necessary. I'd also highly recommend including a link to your personal website. And if you don't have one, create one will probably be the highest impact thing you can do for yourself and your career. It's too much text to link your LinkedIn and GitHub and whatnot. But if you include your personal website, you'll have all of those and more. It'll be like the centralized portal into everything about you. Next, we have your education. College or bootcamp isn't necessary, but if you've done them, they've got to go at the top of the page. I like the top left because it feels natural. If you're in the early years of college, you can include your high school. Otherwise, just put the college. For all your education, there's only a few things that matter. Expected graduation date, GPA, and national test scores. If your GPA is between three and four in the American scale, I'd include it. Otherwise, just skip it. Same with the national test scores. If you took the SAT, ACT, LSAT, GRE, and whatnot, and the scores were strong, include them. If they were weak, skip them. Since we're trying to conserve space, I go back and forth between if abbreviations are okay, so BA or BS versus Bachelors of Arts or Bachelors of Science. I think either is fine. Right below the education, you should list out all your coursework. If you're early in your studies, I'd include everything you're currently taking and all the other classes you plan to finish up by the end of the year. And if you're later in college, you'll have taken more classes than you can fit. So pick the ones that are the most technical, sound the best, and most applicable to the job posting. I also like to use asterisks and mark all the classes I was a teaching assistant for, or any class that I did more than just be a student. Below the coursework section, I like to list out all my relevant skills. And I'm not talking about the basic ones like Microsoft Office or being able to use Windows or Mac. I'm talking about programming languages and technologies. And one thing that I think is really important that most people don't do is self-assessing your competence. Be straight up with the company. Tell them which languages you're confident in and which ones you're only familiar with. Another very efficient way of displaying this is by categorizing the languages by lines of code. So bucket them up, which languages you've written 1,000 lines of code for, or 5,000 or 10,000 plus. I also like to include the human languages I speak, but more as a fun fact than anything else. I mean, how many quadlingual people do you know? This kind of ties in with the personality part of the resume I was talking about. Make it uniquely you. And last thing for the left column, I have my awards. I like to categorize them by year. So I pick two or three of the most impressive awards per year and include them. And keep it very short and sweet. A few words naming the award or honor and ideally an accompanying number, like how much money you won or what place you were out of how many. All right, now the meat of the resume, the stuff that matters most, your experiences. But before I tell you exactly what to do, let's talk about websites. Squarespace offers robust analytics so you can gain powerful insights into who's visiting your site and how they're interacting with your content. You're exposed to metrics like page views, traffic sources, and audience geography. You also have powerful blogging tools at your fingertips that allow you to share stories, photos, videos, and updates. And as you build out your personal brand and business, you can easily gather contributions with PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo. And you have access to member areas where you can unlock new revenue streams for your business by selling access to gated content like classes, online courses, or newsletters. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Kapoor to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.
There are a couple different ways to section off your experiences, but you should do them in order of importance. So work experience, then projects, and then extracurricular groups. Each experience should follow the same format. First, you have the name of the company or project in nice, big, easy to read letters. Then we have your work title. And be strategic here. Like if you went to a hackathon and built a project, don't call yourself a participant. Call yourself an application developer. Make it sound technical. Next up, when were you involved with the project or company? So a date range. And if you're still involved, feel free to write some date dash present. Then a location. And this one's mostly for fun. I think it's a cool way to document all the fun places you visited and worked from. And then lastly, and probably most importantly, what you actually worked on and why it was important in the form of a bulleted list. Most of this is pretty straightforward, but I wanna dive a little bit deeper into the bulleted list and tell you some things you might wanna keep in mind. Start every bullet with an action word in past tense. Think of strong verbs like implemented, researched, experimented, and so on. Be concise and use lots of numbers. Compute the impact. Think of how many people you affected or how much time or money you saved for the company. I wanna see percentages and dollar signs and timestamps. If you're early in your career, I'd go for quantity over quality. So a bunch of experiences, but maybe not that many bullets for each, no more than two. But if you're later in your career, it's all about quality over quantity. You should have a few experiences, but a lot to say for each one, multiple bullets. And be really careful with formatting. Make sure there are no typos. And if you're not using complete sentences, then be consistent with that. There's nothing worse than finding some bullet points are ending with periods and some aren't. And finally, right at the bottom of the resume, I like to include something cool about me. Like I used to beatbox for an acapella group in college and not that many people do that. It's a great conversation starter and better yet, something a recruiter might remember. In a pool of thousands of resumes, I want the recruiter to be like, oh yeah, Naman Kapoor, that software engineer applicant who also beatboxes. In fact, if I was to edit this resume right now, I'd probably include a link to my YouTube channel because it's so unique. I'd highly recommend you find a cool thing about yourself and put it on the resume. And the very last thing I'll say is when you're exporting your resume and sharing it with people or companies, make sure to use the PDF format. It's cross compatible and there's a lesser chance that the application tracking system or ATS automatically rejects you. Improvements. No resume is perfect and mine is no exception. In fact, this is what my current resume looks like. I think I've done a better job with white space and I've used styling like bolding certain numbers to really draw your attention. And I've also used color for effect. It's also really easy to understand what's a link and what's not because I've made every link blue. And since I'm more experienced now, I've gone the quality over quantity approach. So you see less experiences, but more information about each one. You can find my current software engineering resume on my website. I've also included a link to the template in the description below. I wish you nothing but the best in your journey to crafting the perfect resume. That's all I have. Till next time, cheers.